here's what we're getting into today. We're going to talk about debt because if I'm a betting man, not all of you are going to have debt. And if you don't still, this is important because you know people that have debt and I want you to help them get out of debt. So we're going to talk about how to erase debt. And we're going to talk about with or without the money multiplier banking policy, how you can do this and be more effective. Because what you've been taught about money is not the whole truth. Okay, a lot of the things we've been taught about money our entire lives, from where to put our money, how to invest our money, it's a big lie. It seems to be a thing going around lately, right? Lying, there just seems to be this whole big thing where it just seems to be okay to tell people lies. This is not normal. Well, in life, you've been taught how money works and you've been taught all wrong. And I know this because as a financial advisor, what I was taught, how I was taught to help my clients, not all of it was wrong, but a lot of it was designed not to really help the client, but to help me make more money. And in the effort of me making more money, I was hopeful to help my clients make more money. But a lot of times an advisor requires you to do a couple things. Number one, an advisor requires you to save more money. Okay. Key thing. I would always ask people, how much money are you saving and can you save more? Number two, I would always ask them, what is your risk tolerance? How much risk can you take to get the results that you want? Now, let's really think about that, right? How many of you want to save more money? Now, some of you might raise your hand and say, yes, I want to save more money. But a lot of you are like, I really can't. I can't because I've got too much data. Too much of my money is going out the door. Not enough is staying in my household. And that's a problem. Statistically, 90 cents of every single dollar that people make in income goes out the door to somebody else. Think about it. Do the math. Go through and create a budget. We did a training on budgets, but go through and create a budget. Put your income on one side, put your expenses and all where all your money goes on the other side. And what's left? For most people, it's 10% or less because 90 cents of every dollar is going out the door to someone else. Folks, that's a problem. You want to build wealth? It doesn't have to involve you working harder, working longer, saving more, taking on more risk, or giving up control of your money. None of those need to happen in order for you to build wealth. What does have to happen is you have to develop a system. You have to change one thing first. Can all of you change one thing? Can you agree that you can change one thing in your life? I bet you you can. And I'm sure, yep, there we go. So yes, some of you guys are saying, yes, I can change one thing. I know you can change one thing. And this is going to require you to change one thing. And that is where your money goes first. And the best time to start, the best time to start changing that one thing is folks right now. See my watch? It's always the right time. Doesn't matter what time of the day it is, my watch is always right because it's now. And that's the only time that you should ever focus on is what you're doing now. So we're going to have to change one thing. And that one thing is going to change everything. But that one change is not going to require you to work harder, work longer, take on more risk, give up control of your money. It's not going to require any of that. Because all we're going to do in today's training is teach you how to build wealth by taking back the money that you're giving away to everybody else. And how I'm going to do this today is I'm going to do it by showing you my map. I'm going to do it by showing you my policy. I'm going to do it by showing you my numbers and how I've done it and my loans that I've taken from my policy. It's so ironic. I just got this check yesterday. And this is exactly what we're going to talk about because today we're going to pay this line of credit off. This loan for my infinite banking policy is going to pay off this debt. And you're going to see how this happens. And so much so that I literally have right here in this, the payoff to the bank. There's the check that's going to pay off the bank line of credit. Yep. So folks, this is all factual. I'm literally doing this real time. That's why I can teach you this so well, because I live and breathe this. I do this every day. I use this every day. Literally, like for my mind to go back and think the way that I used to, I can't even think that way anymore because I made that switch. If you guys haven't seen the backward bicycle video, you must watch that video. Go to Google, type in backward bicycle and watch that, watch that video. It's all about changing your mindset. It's about changing one thing and it takes time and it takes doing it and it takes effort. This is not easy. Okay, but this 
is not going to require you to do any of those things I said. You're not going to have to work harder. You're not going to have to save more. You're not going to have to risk more. You're not going to have to give up control. You're going to actually take back control and you're going to build wealth by taking back the money that you're giving away. Does that sound good? And all you're going to do is you're going to do it BYOB by becoming your own bank. All right, let's get into this. So here is my current debts. Now I used to have a lot more debts than this. You see, this is where I'm at today. I have two types of debt. And I want to be clear, you also may have two types. I have business debt and I have personal debt. And we want to separate them. Notice I've got this big line down the middle. I want to separate my debts. Okay. So my business debts are paid by my businesses, by my real estate companies, by money school, by, you know, any of my businesses pay this. These are both real estate. So this is a real estate debt and this is a real estate debt. If any of you have heard my story, you've heard me talk about my mom, my unconditional one, and my mom's line of credit, which we started and my mom put her house on the line so that when I was 17 turning 18, she put her house on the line so that I can open fat man board shops, my dream, my skateboard snowboard shops. She did that. I'm not suggesting you do that, but these are my debts. My mom's line of credit is still used today to pay for her car. So the money that she makes on this line of credit by lending this $63,000 out, that money pays for her car payment because this is what she pays. She pays 5%, okay? She's paying 5% on this debt. And actually I'm paying it. This, this is me because you see this is my personal and business debt. So I'm paying 5% on this debt and we're lending this debt out at 10%. So this is what we're making. So we make 10 and we pay five. But wouldn't it be really cool if we could use this, but make the full 10 without having to give 5% to the bank? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna show you how we're gonna pay all this off. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it in a very short period of time using this system, okay? The money multiplier method and what we call the snowball to pay off all of your debts. And you're going to be able to bring and take back all of that wealth, but you got to be diligent in this. But we're going to talk about how I'm doing this. These are my business debts, my personal debts right here. Wells Fargo, I have a loan on the Mercedes, 63,101. I pay $1,103 a month. That kills me every month that I have to make that payment. So some of you might be like, yeah, Chris, you have seven of these banking policies. Why don't you just pay that thing off? Folks, I already said this. There's a process. There is a process and a method to the madness and how we do this. This will get paid off, just like my visa will get paid off, just like my line of credit that I use for my stock account, and just like my line of credit that I used to buy a villa in Mexico a few years ago. All of these will be paid off through this process. You with me? So these are my debts. Now, the very first thing we need to do, okay, and I already did this, but the very first thing we need to do is we need to organize our debts. So let me go to the next slide. So this is important. We, we need to snowball your debts. Now, any of you that know Dave Ramsey, this is what he does. This is talked about by lots of gurus. This is not something I came up with, but this is something that absolutely works. Okay. We are going to snowball your debt. So I kind of should have drawn this over here, but we're going to literally snowball your debt just like this. Notice how when you start a snowball, it gets bigger and bigger as it rolls downhill. Well, it works the same way with your debt. But here's how we got to organize your debt. First off, and, and write this stuff down. I want you all taking notes. This is so vitally important. Now, if you're not working with the money multiplier, if we're not creating a map, you can do this on your own. If you are working with me or my team at the money multiplier, we do all this for you. But you have to basically know why we do that, which is what we're getting into today. So first off, I want you to then go through all your debts and I want you to organize them from the lowest balance to the highest, okay? Lowest to highest, write that down. I want your debts put in order from lowest to highest. So this is what it would look like. So if you went into your debts, here's mine. See up front, I have a lot of people think when they pay debt off, they should pay the highest interest rate off. So if I was to pay my highest interest rate, it would be my visa, but that's not how I would organize this. My visa is number one for payoff because it's 4,400. So let's go over here, lowest to highest. So if I was to do that, number one would be my visa. Why would my visa be number one? Because it's the lowest amount, okay? Number two, okay, over here, a lot of people would look and try to make number two based on the highest interest rate. That is not the case. Number two is the lowest balance. So my key bank line of credit. So we're gonna write key bank line of credit. 
Okay, and I've already done this. So you can see I'm going lowest to highest. So number one, number two is my Mexico villa. Why? Because it's 14,000, it's the second lowest balance. So 14,000, so we got number one, number two. Number three would be key bank line of credit because it's the lowest balance. Okay, we're going lowest to highest, 4,000 to 14 to 20, and the highest is the car. So why is my car not getting paid off even though I could pay this off right now? There's enough money in my banking policies, but I don't wanna pay this off yet because I wanna snowball my debts. I gotta follow the system. You have all been taught different things. And if I went and I did a poll and a survey with all of you asking, what is the best way to pay off debt? Many of you would say, well, Chris, if the best way to pay off debt would be to start with the highest interest rate. Okay, and then just keep going the highest interest rate, which this is not fair because it does actually go in that order. So you would think that it's the highest interest rate. It is not, that is not how we do it. We do it by balance, okay? Why would we use the balance as the determining factor? Because it's much faster to pay off 4,400 than it is to pay off the highest interest rate if it was a higher one. Here, let me use, these are, these are tough and it's kind of screwing me up because very rarely will your debts work way minded, but over here, you know, if I was looking at it, I would want to pay off the highest interest rate first, normally in the way we're taught, but that wouldn't be the case. You would pay the lowest balance off. So my debts are kind of weird, but we're only talking about mine. So lowest to highest, you guys got that? That's what we're going to do. Lowest to highest. Visa, Key Bank, okay, three, then we've got another debt. And then the last one is Mercedes, okay, the, the Wells Fargo. So that's how we would do that. So we would put them in order from lowest to highest, got that. So we're gonna do that. Then the second thing, the interest rate and the payment amount typically don't matter. That's weird, right? You would think that you'd wanna always pay off the highest interest rate first. That is a myth. That does not get you the desired goal. Even if you had a credit card that was 29%, but that balance was 10,000, you had another loan that was 5,000, and that loan was only 5%, we would pay the 5,000 off first, then we would move on to the bigger balance. You see, it's not the interest rate. And that is a big myth that people think when they pay off debt. And the most important thing in this, okay, this is important from lowest to highest, okay? What is not important is interest rate and payment. They matter, but they only matter because this one right here is the most important. We have to recycle and recapture the payments that we're giving away to everybody else. So if you think about what does that mean, we have to change our mindset. We have to change the way that we think about how money works. And I'm kind of walking you through this process and this is really going to show it. Now, how I'm gonna show this is I'm gonna show this using an infinite banking policy. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show this using my mass mutual. You guys can see there's the check, okay? Right there, whoops, mass mutual, okay? I'm gonna show you using all of this using a mass mutual policy. And how we're going to do it is we're going to do it by changing that one thing, folks. One thing, that's all we got to change, just, just one thing. And that one change that we're going to make will change everything. So here's the deal. All of you that are watching this right now, the chances are that you have a job. And there's also a good chance that you have an income coming in. And if you don't, this is going to be really tough. So listen, I can't help everybody. I wish I could. I want to help everybody. And I know I can but I can't help people that aren't helping themselves and that don't want to help themselves. I always like to say that I can help 5% of the people out there. I can help 5% of the people because 5% of the people want help. The other 95% that are going to be the, the, the statistics that are part of the social security uh, administration numbers, which is out of a hundred people, only five of them will be financially secure at the age of retirement. Those are statistics from the social security administration. First off, you don't want to be part of that statistic. You want to be the five percenters. This is what the five percenters do, okay? The five percenters are saving money, okay? But you're saving money probably in the traditional place. So a lot of people, they make an income, then they take that money and they save that money in a regular bank account, right? You put it in your bank. Maybe it goes into your 401k. It's going one of those two places. Maybe it goes into your IRA. Maybe it goes into your brokerage account. You can see there's a lot of different places that your money is going right now. All I'm gonna tell you that you wanna do is you wanna change just one thing. All this can still happen. Your 401k, you should still contribute at least up to the match that your company is giving you into that 401k. 
you definitely want to put money into retirement because you're going to get a tax deduction on that money. But I, I see people all the time, all the time. And I just did a training with a financial advisor and I couldn't even get in his head. I was so mad on that training the other day that I did because he failed to want to learn. That's the wrong way to wait. He did not want to learn how this works. He thought he knew what he didn't know, which is why you always hear me say that quote from who, who do I always quote? I always quote Will Rogers. The biggest problem in America is not what people don't know. The biggest problem in America is what people think they know that just ain't so. Financial advisors are my absolute hardest people to talk to because they think they know what ain't so because they've been taught all wrong. I know this because I was. So they're taught to basically take your income and your savings and move it into high risk investments or maybe even low risk, it doesn't matter, but they're taught to take that money and put it a certain way, which is not in your control. But what if we could just change that one thing? What if we could take that money, take it from where you're saving it now, stop that and change where that money goes. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna put that money into an infinite banking policy. Now, what is infinite banking policy? Infinite banking concept is a process, which is what I'm gonna show you here with this circle. I'm gonna show you the process of becoming the bank, just like my hat says. So become the bank. B-Y-O-B. -B. I love it so much, I made a hat and a logo to go with this. B-Y-O-B, become your own bank. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do. And to become your own bank, what you need to do is you need to treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money. In other words, if you're okay paying the bank 6% on a car loan, then you should be okay paying yourself the same 6% if you were the bank. Think about it. If you owned a bank, okay, would you take a loan from your bank and never pay your bank back? Well, if you did, your bank would go out of business, wouldn't it? If you kept taking loans from your bank and you never paid your bank back, your bank would go out of business. Because when you take a loan from the bank that you go to, Bank of America, let's pick on them. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you exactly what you do. When you go to your bank, okay, we're just going to pick on Bank of America. Just because it's a big bank and all of you know that. If you went to Bank of America and Bank of America gave you a loan, okay, that loan must be repaid, okay? And if it's not, what happens if you don't repay this? Consequences, okay? So I'm gonna write, there's consequences if you don't pay that back. And I'm just gonna do that in a big, unhappy smiley here. But we're gonna pay this bank back because we took the loan from the bank and in that we made a commitment. So we committed to paying the bank back. So if this loan, let's just say you took a $10,000 loan and they were going to charge you 6% over five years, you would then pay this loan back. Let's just say that it's 150 bucks. I don't know the math. I'm just making it up. You would give this money back to Bank of America on a monthly basis. So every month you would pay Bank of America the equivalent of whatever loan terms you came up with back to the bank and you would never think nothing of it. So if this were your bank, so if we erased this up here and all we did, okay, all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna change the name on the bank. Okay, all we're gonna do is we're gonna basically create your own bank. So this is your bank. So if all we did is change the name on the door to you, okay, so this is you instead of the bank, would anything else change? Would you now treat your money different than you used to treat Bank of America's money? In other words, if you took a loan from your bank, it doesn't have to be repaid, okay? So we gotta get rid of this. So right here, must be repaid. Let's put, you have the option. It's different, right? We're doing the same thing to repay. You have the option to repay. Doesn't that sound better? The option versus the obligation. Wouldn't you rather have the option instead of the obligation, you would. So you have the option to repay this loan, but you should be committed to paying back your bank, okay? So you should pay your bank back. Let's just erase this. I'm just trying to change the wording, right? You are committed to paying your bank back. 
So all we want to do, we want to pay your bank back. So if you took a loan for 10,000 from your bank, okay, this is your loan, and you were willing to give Bank of America 6% over five years, well, would it make sense just to pay your bank back 150 a month? Yeah, but it's your option. So if something happens and you can't make this $150 payment, let's just say there's a month and you can't pay anything, right? You, let's see, you are in control. Therefore, if something happens, you can't make this payment, it's not gonna have consequences. So this consequences over here, these go away. You have no consequences now because you are the bank, because you're the bank, but then we're gonna basically then get back on our feet and then we're gonna repay ourselves that 150 bucks. Why? Because we are committed to treating our money the same way you would treat the bank's money. Does that make sense, folks? Does that make sense? All we're gonna do here is we're gonna treat our money the exact same as we would treat the bank's money. Let me frame this in another thing. If you owned a grocery store, okay, you'd have a good business. People come into your grocery store, they buy goods and services off the, the shelves, they buy their food, they pay at the count at the register and they leave. But what would happen if every day your grocery store, you walked in and you filled your grocery, you filled a cart up with food and you wheeled it out the back door, you never paid. And every single day you start, you did this. And then all of a sudden your wife or your kids saw you doing this and they just did the same thing. Like, oh, we own the grocery store. So we're just going to fill a cart up and we're going to push it out the door. What would happen to your grocery store eventually? It would go out of business because people would see you doing that and they would mimic what you're doing. First, it would start with friends and family. Then it would start with just regular people. They're like, well, if the owner is stealing from his grocery store, well, then I might as well steal from the, your grocery store as well. If it's okay for you to do it, then everybody's going to do it. So don't make it okay for you to treat your money any different than you treat the bank's money. Are we clear about that? Because this is very important. This is the part that I can't help you with. I can't help you change your mindset. I can't help you treat, I can't make you or help you treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money. You have to do that. I can give you the system. I can give you the machine. I can show you how to move your money through this system using an awesome, awesome machine, but I can't change your mindset, folks. That's on you. So this right here, to become your own bank, you have to basically picture yourself as the bank and treat your money the same. And I'm beating this up a lot because it's very important because here we are only going to change one thing and we're going to change where your money goes first. So what is this IBC policy? It is nothing more than a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned insurance company. These are not your normal whole life policies. I want to be clear about that. This is not the whole life that you go into the store and you buy a whole life insurance policy off the shelf and you basically do it because those are life insurance. Money is paid out someday when you graduate, when you die. These plans are going to be used for banking. They're designed completely different. I get people all the time saying, well, who do we use for that? Hello, this is what we do. The money multiplier does this for you. We create everything I'm gonna show you today. We do it for you because we know how and all we're going to do is create your map, your system and all you needed to do was change just one thing. We do the rest. That's the beauty of this. People don't wanna take on a lot more responsibilities. Clearly in this country, people definitely don't wanna take on more responsibilities. So we understand that. We created the system, we use the system and we're bringing that system to you. So if you need help setting up your infinite banking policy, the money multiplier is the one that's going to do it. Me, Brent, Steven, Gabby, Shauna, Hannah, we are all part of the same team to help you. So I never say that. And I get people all the time saying, well, who should we call? Should we call our insurance agent? Should we call our financial advisor? Sure, if you don't want this to work, call them. They won't know how this works, but they'll say they do because they want the commission, but they're not willing to give up 60 to 90% of their commission so that you have access to your money immediately in the first 30 days. Key thing, follow the dollar. So now that we've all agreed that we're gonna set up this one, we're gonna change one thing where your savings goes, okay? Because we're gonna take where part of your savings or part of your income is going. Instead of going to your traditional bank that pays you less than 1%, we're gonna take that and we're going to put that down here in this specially designed and engineered whole life. That's what this is. Okay, this is that whole life policy. And by doing that, you are going to earn 4% interest guaranteed. And that interest is paid 
every, every day that interest is calculated. It's compounding, okay? Plus, we're dealing with mutually owned insurance companies. And because we're dealing with mutually owned insurance companies, they're going to pay you a dividend every year. So the company we're going to talk about today, which is this policy, Mass Mutual, okay? Today in 2020, in full transparency, dividends are not guaranteed, okay? This year, they pay 2.2%. So our policy, this specially designed and engineered whole life, is going to pay you 6.2%. Folks, is your bank account paying you 6.2%? Are you making 6.2% in any guaranteed account? Are you making 6.2% in that high risk mutual fund you're in? I don't know, maybe and maybe not. But here, I will tell you that that 4% is guaranteed. That's a powerful thing. But see here then what we're gonna do is we're not gonna put the money here and leave it sit. See, when you put money in your savings account, you just put it there and you leave it sit. Because you know if you take that money out, you stop the flow of interest. So even if your bank, Okay, if your bank or your investment account is paying you 1% on your money in that really, really conservative account, because we gotta, we gotta create apples for apple comparisons, right? If you're making, we're doing 4% guaranteed. You gotta have something guaranteed up here. If you're gonna compare this to stocks, that's not a fair comparison, folks, because stocks are not guaranteed. So you might be making 1%, maybe some of you have a way to make 2%, but would you rather make four or one or two? four or one, four or two, which one do you want to make? Plus, if you put money into this account and you take that money out, this goes away. This goes to zero. You stop the flow of interest when you take money out. That's what we need to change. And that's what this system does. You see, when we're making 4% with the insurance company, plus the dividend, we're making 6.2%. And when we take the money out of our account, okay, now let's get into this. And all of you, I have videos that I'm going to email you to explain this. So if this is the first time you're seeing this and there's anything you don't understand, I've got so many videos that we're going to send you that will explain exactly how this system works. So I'm just covering the high level because I want to get into the mapping. So your infinite banking policy allows you, the insurance company allows you to take your money in the form of a loan. So we have the ability to access our money. So let's just say you took $10,000 for the year and let's just do a thousand a month, right? Let's do $1,000. You take $1,000 and you put it into your infinite banking on a monthly basis. And this can be any number you want. It can be 500 a month, 1,000 a month. Hell, you can put 10,000 a month, 40,000 a month, 100,000 a month, up to the limit is what you can do. But we're gonna just put $1,000 a month, fair enough. And when we put that 1,000 in, we're gonna immediately in the first 30 days, Three, zero, 30 days, I'm gonna write that. So we put $1,000 in, okay, there's our $1,000 deposit. We make the deposit, not to our bank, but to our specially designed and engineered whole life policy, our infinite banking policy. And we're immediately in 30 days or less, basically when your check clears, for any of you that are watching this, we're gonna take that money out as a loan. But see, our $1,000 stays here and makes 4% plus dividend. It never leaves our account. So where does, the, where does this loan come from? Well, the insurance company made you a promise. So let me write this over here. So there, here's the two promises the insurance company made. Number one, two promises. They promised to pay you 4% guarantee. Okay, promise number one. Promise number two is they promised to pay a death benefit upon your graduation. So those are two promises and there's more promises, but we're just gonna focus on these two. 4% right here and a death benefit. So when you take this loan, okay, when you take the loan out of this plan, you can't take it all in the first year. Over time, this plan will mature and capitalize and you'll be able to take that money out. Usually year three, four, or five, depending on the plan design. The plan you're gonna look at from mine, the one we're gonna look at today for me, that plan capitalizes by year three, meaning by year three, every thousand dollars that I put into my plan, I make more than a thousand dollars. Isn't that awesome? If I put a thousand into my account, I can take more than a thousand dollars. That is how this works. Because remember, this thousand never leaves this account, which means that thousand is always earning 4% plus the dividend. My account is making 6.2%. Whether I have the money in there or I take the money out, I'm gonna show you taking the money out. And we're gonna do different dollar amounts than a thousand, but I, when I take that money out, I'm taking a loan against the debt benefit. So let's just say I started with a $500,000 debt benefit, okay? And let's say instead of taking a thousand, I'm gonna round this up, okay? I'm gonna assume 
Over the course of the year, I put in $12,000. Okay, this is over the year. I put 12,000 in. So I'm just gonna take out $6,000. We're gonna take a loan for $6,000. Where did I come up with six? I don't know, I just, I did half. Could it be more? Sure. Could it be 10? Sure. If you have the right plan. So let's, let's round that up, simple math. We're gonna take, we put 12,000 in and we're gonna take 10,000 out, okay? Simple math. Now what happens up here? This loan that I took from the insurance company, they're gonna charge me interest. How much? 5%. They're gonna charge me 5% simple interest on my loan. Now, some of you might be like, oh, I don't want loans, Chris. I'm trying to pay loans off. I'm trying to pay loans off. I don't wanna create more loans. Folks, you're already forgetting what I told you because what I told you earlier was we have to treat our money the same way we treat the bank's money. Remember this? Treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money. So don't get hung up on the loan. All this loan is, is an advance of your death benefit. So the insurance company is going to take that loan from the death benefit. So now if you die or graduate, 490,000 is gonna be paid to your beneficiary. See, the insurance company made those two promises. They promised to pay you 4% and a death benefit. So if you take 10,000 from the 500, then 490 gets paid out, which means that this loan is a loan, okay? but it's a loan from your bank. You don't have to pay that loan back. Sometimes I gotta beat this in. You have the option, not the obligation to pay your bank back. You don't have to, okay? When you took money from Bank of America or whatever bank, you had to pay that bank back. This is your bank. You don't have the option or obligation, you have the option, but you should commit to paying your bank back like I'm gonna show you just trying to help you understand this, okay? So we took this loan from our policy. The insurance company gave us $10,000 from their general account, which would have been used to pay out my death benefit. So this loan doesn't have to be paid back, but they're gonna charge 5%. So how much was I making? 6.2, right? So 6.2, we now lose 5% to simple interest on the loan, loan interest, okay? So that means now, 6.2 minus five is I made 1.2% gross. Okay, this is how much I made. Your bank account isn't paying you 1.2% right now. Heck, some of your money market accounts aren't paying you 1.2. Are you making 1.2% on your money for keeping your money in the account? I just showed you how you can take the money out of your account and make a 1.2%. See, that's a big difference. Because here's the deal. Your money is still in your account earning interest. So next year, when you do the same thing, next year, when you put another 12,000 in, we can probably take more money out, okay? But not only that, am I only making 1.2? No, because this 6.2 is not compounding on 12,000, it's compounding on 12,000 plus interest and dividends. Every year that money goes up. If you've never seen it in my, my um, uh, newsletter, I do a thing showing you, would you rather take a million dollars or a penny doubled every day for 30 days? Well, if you said the penny doubled every day for 30 days, you understand compounding. You understand Albert Einstein's theory called the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest is the most powerful thing in the financial world. Those that understand it, earn it. Okay? You need to earn it. Those that don't understand it, pay it. This side is where your money's leaving. You see how I got all this money leaving your household every single day? Gone, 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 gone. That's not understanding compound interest. And when you don't understand it, you pay it. So we don't wanna pay it, okay? We wanna give the insurance company what they want, the 5%, but we wanna keep this. And every single year that goes by, this number goes up. How cool would that be to be able to use all of your money, still get paid on your money and have the ability for you to make more and more and more every year because your money is compounding, but it's not just compounding. It's doing what I love to call uninterrupted compound interest. You're earning uninterrupted compound interest because when you take this money out as a loan, you didn't take your money. Therefore, your money is not interrupted. Genius. This is so beyond genius that I wish I could say that I came up with this, but I didn't. The Rockefellers. The wealthy, the Rothschilds, they've been using this for years. I didn't come up with this, but I'm using it. I've subscribed to it. I do this and it changed my life just like it's going to yours. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to take this 10 grand out. And what I'm going to have you do, what we do at the Money Multiplier, and this is just for books and records, okay? We are going to basically go to your bank. Let's just say it's Bank of America. And we're going to basically open up a second checking account. And we're going to call this a segregated bank account. That's all we're doing. Segregated bank account. We only want our loans and our repayments to go into a separate bank account. Why would we do that? Well, if your regular checking account is anything like mine, it's like the black hole. Every time you put money in it, that money seems to disappear. So we want to keep this money separate because we want to keep solid records. We want records of where our money is going and how it's operating. So to keep records, what we have to do is we have to have a segregated bank account. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to pop this 12 grand into our segregated account. So now we took the loan from our infinite banking policy. We deposited that 10 grand into this regular bank account. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we do every single day. We're gonna pay our debts, we're gonna pay our car loans, we're gonna pay our real estate, we're gonna pay other monies. Right now, this, is, this box here is all the money that's leaving your house, okay? Your household is giving away 90% of every dollar is going to somebody else. We need to take that back and here's how we do that. If we took 10 grand out, could we pay off some debts? Yeah. And if we paid off those debts, this money that was leaving, can we stop that money from leaving and then take those debts that we paid off with this 10 grand? So we, we basically took and we used 10 grand and we paid down our debts. And let's just assume that those debts were costing us $300 a month. Okay. So we paid our debts down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that same $300 that you're giving away to your debt that you just paid down. And we're going to basically recapture that $300. It's the same money, folks. Again, I said you didn't have to work any harder, work any longer. We're using the same dollars. We're just taking the money back that you're giving away. So this $300 that you were giving to these debts, we're going to basically recycle and recapture that money. That money's going to go in here every month. $300 is going to go into your segregated account. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that money build up and then we're going to pay more debts down. We're going to pay more car loans down. We're going to do whatever, but what you're eventually going to do is the same thing as me. You're going to treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money. And you're going to repay the loan you took from the insurance company. Why would we want to? Well, if the insurance company is charging us 5%, wouldn't I want to pay 5% on a lower amount? If I didn't have to change anything or work any harder or take on any more risk, wouldn't it make sense to pay this down? It would. And how we do that is through a form like this. You see, I just did it. We're going to go into my map, but this is a line of credit that I just paid off. And I was paying that line of credit $289. So I rounded it up. This is $300. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is my pre-authorized PAC, okay? Pre-authorized check loan repayment authorization. It is a one page form, one page. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to basically staple a check on that, avoid a check. And I'm going to say, I wanted to have $300 every single month drawn from my segregated account. This is the same bank account, folks. Same bank account here and here. I'm gonna have $300 drawn to pay that loan back. So every month, my loan is being repaid by $300 a month. So now that means that every single month, I'm paying less money to the insurance company. Now I don't have to pay the insurance company monthly like I would a normal loan. The insurance company just calculates how much 5% is on that $10,000 loan, which is $500, and if I don't pay that off, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to subtract 500 more from my death benefit. But again, don't, don't be an, un, you want to be an honest banker by not paying this loan back or thinking, oh, well, it's just going to come off my death benefit. You are not being an honest banker. You're not being an honest business owner. If you owned a grocery store, you're stealing groceries out the back door by not paying yourself back. And all we do is we just keep doing this folks. We keep making deposits the same deposits we're making today into our savings or our 401ks or wherever that money's going today, we're going to change where that money goes. And by changing that, we're now going to make uninterrupted compound interest. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take loans. Okay. We're going to take loans. We're going to deposit those loans in the segregated bank account that you created at your local bank. That segregated bank account is just there. So we have accurate records and we're going to get into why we want these records. We want a back office for your bank. If you go into the bank and you take a loan from your bank, or I'm sorry, from Bank of America, this loan, when you took it out, there's a back office, isn't there? There's somebody in the back office that's tracking all these, these, these loans, right? They're tracking the 10,000, they're tracking the $150 a month payment. Bank of America has a back office for this and they have a system for tracking all this. Well, we're gonna create that same system. 
We're just mimicking what the banks do. So we want this segregated account so we can keep track of the records. We wanna know what money comes in, what money goes out, what money comes back through the recycle recapture. And we wanna show this, that bank account right here and here is how we do that. All we're doing is moving your money, okay? To become the bank, BYOB, to be the bank, all you need to do is move your money from this place, your bank, your infinite banking policy, your specially designed whole life. I just want you to understand that that's what this is. It's a specially designed whole life. This is your machine. This machine's only function is to move your money the most effective and efficient way you can. Meaning we make deposits, we take those deposits out, we move them over here to where you're already spending money and we pay things down. We pay off your debts, we pay off your car loans and then we get to recapture the car loans. So now we got 300 a month from paying our debts off. We paid the car loan off. Now we have $500 a month. So now we got an additional 500 a month going into that account. And then we set up a loan repayment for 500 a month. And we just keep doing that, okay? We pay off our lines of credit like you're gonna see me do today. So we get another 300. And then we add that 300 here. And we add that 300 here. So now by changing nothing, all we did is we just paid off our car loan. We paid off our debts. We paid off some other things. We'll get into real estate later. All we did is we stopped giving your money away to everybody else. See that? And now we're going to give that same money back to you, to your bank. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You now have $1,100 going into your bank, paying down your loan. That $1,100 is not new money. It's money you used to give away. You just took it back. So does that make sense, folks? All we're doing here, all we're doing here is following this system. Okay, we're following the same system that you follow with your bank, except for your bank is in control of your money. Your bank, okay, not, and when I say your bank, I mean Bank of America. So let's get rid of this. So if we're talking about Bank of America, okay, Bank of America, they are in control, okay? So the loan, they control the terms, which means there are consequences. We already went over this, okay? You're committed to paying the bank back at the terms, during the time frame, exact. You're not in control in this situation. But when we just change one thing, and that one thing we change is we change whose name is on the bank, which now we're gonna put, this is your bank, okay? By doing that, you're in control of the terms, which means there are no consequences, which means you now have the option to repay, not the obligation to repay, okay, down here, you are now in control of the monthly payments. And now the monthly payments go back to you every month instead of going back to somebody else. We're just following this exact system. So now that we've understood that, we understand how we're gonna do this by moving your money. All we're doing is moving your money around this circle. And all we did is changed one thing. One thing is all we changed. Now let's keep going. Let's get into this because this gets way more fun. Over here, how did we snowball that? Lowest balance to highest balance, the interest rate and the monthly payment didn't matter. But the most important thing was recycling and recapturing the money you're giving away to everybody else. We just showed you that on the other one. Now, as we kind of walk through right here, this is my debts. Here's my map. We will create your map as well. We will create the exact same thing you're going to see in a second for you if you work with the money multiplier. How much do you have to pay me? How much do you have to pay the money multiplier? Zero, folks. We get paid by the insurance company, even though the insurance company pays us 60 to 90% less money than your financial advisor gets paid when they sell you a whole life policy, because we gave up most of our commission. So you had access to 60 to 90% of your money. The moment you deposit, you see that difference. Remember back to Zig Ziglar. I said it earlier, help enough people get what they want and you get what you want. We give so you can get. We give our commissions up so you have access to 60 to 90% of your money immediately in the first 30 days. But in doing that, we basically will create this map. So we've already snowballed all my debts, right? Over here on my personal, we're gonna pay off Visa first. After Visa, we're gonna pay off this key bank line of credit, the one that we use to pay for my villa in Mexico, okay? Number three, we're gonna pay off this key bank, which I used in March to take money out and put money into my banking policy and then pay for the, the purchase of stocks. I bought Tesla, Southwest Airlines. I bought Royal Caribbean and I sold all those because that was <laughs> smart to do. Buy low, sell high, don't lose money. Over here in my business, 
you're going to see today. This key bank line of credit is first. It's got the lowest balance, 16,559. And then after that, we're going to start chipping away at mom's key bank line of credit. So let's get into this because I want to show you how this works. Here's my map. Can everybody see that map? This is my map. I know it's, I don't think I can make it bigger. So we're going to just have to go along with it. That is the same thing I'm looking at right here. And my policy, so let me just change the color here. Let's get to a fun color. Uh, let's do purple. Okay, we're going to do purple. This is my map. So here's how it works. This plan, now I have seven banking policies and I have two maps here. Okay, I have my mass mutual policy and I have my one America policy right here. My one America policy is what you're seeing up here. This is my new mass mutual plan. Each one of my plans, I do a separate map because I have separate things that I want each of my maps to do and each of my policies to do yours. We can combine your maps into one. If you only have one goal, we can combine them. Why I did this is I want to pay off my business debt. Okay, I want to pay off my business debt with my mass mutual plan. And I want to pay off my personal debt with my AUL plan. So you can see this one has a map to do that, and this one has a map to do that. But what we're going to talk about is we're going to just look at this. I'm just using this as an example. I want to show you how I pay off my personal debts. What I do is I make $1,500 a month deposits. I know you guys probably can't see this. I apologize. It's kind of far away. So just, just follow the numbers. This is what your map would look like. All I had to do is I had to input my debts. So here's my debts, okay? All those personal debts that you were seeing right here, and that's why I wrote them out. Wells Fargo, Visa, KeyBank, KeyBank, all those debts are just right up here. So those are these debts right here, right here, right here. That's all those are, those are just the debts. And then as I then make deposits, I take loans. So I make a deposit for 15. Now this is my 11th policy month. I've had this policy for, well actually roughly 12 months now because we're in November. So I've had it for 12 months, but I make $1,500 deposits. Every quarter I take a loan out. Here's a loan, there's a loan, there's a loan. And all I'm doing is you can see these loans keep going up. They stay the same here, but then they go up. Now I'm taking 4,077, not 2,458. I'm making every month $1,500 deposits. Every month that money just comes right out of my account and it goes into my savings. I was already saving this money before and I just changed that one thing, okay? And as I take these loans, I pay off debts. So I took this loan here and I pay down the balance. I take this loan here, I pay down the balance. I take this loan here, I pay down the balance. Every time I do that, it gives me money to recapture, which this is hard to follow because this has been in force already. So we're not gonna talk so much about this one, but 337 was saved there. So you can see all I did is I recaptured the money that I was giving away to these debts right here. And this map has to be updated. So every year, I take back $4,044 of money that I was giving away to everybody else. Your map will look the same, but now let's get into a real scenario. So if that's how your map works, how else can you use this? Well, I'm gonna show you because here's, here's how I just did it. So this is that one line of credit. So let's go back. So you guys understand the map. We create that for you and we manage that. But now let me come over here. This is my mass mutual policy right here. My mass mutual policy, I deposit $30,000 a year into this plan. So it's a bigger plan. It's a home, it's a mass mutual HECV, high early cash value. Not my favorite type of plan design, but the one that works the best for easy short term growth and easy short term access. This plan gives me access to roughly 90% of my money immediately when I deposit it. Sometimes it was about 85% actually because I took it out immediately, literally. I put it in and within a couple of days I took the money out. So I didn't have any interest built up. So I got about 85% of my first deposit, which was 15. And if you look here, no, I'm sorry, 30. If you look here, this is my mass mutual statement that I ordered just for today's training. This is just a letter saying I put 30 in, my maximum loan available is 26,000. The interest rate for taking that loan is 5%. Anniversary date is October 1st. So you can see all my numbers are right here, just being completely trans transparent. And then they actually send, here's the breakdown of where my money is. My dividend, 16,000. My return of unused premium, 10. That's how I get my net cash value of 27,936.19. So I have 27,936.19 available. I have a maximum loan of 26. You see how they hold a little bit, but how much money am I making 4% plus dividend on? $30,000, okay? 30 was my deposit. That's how much I'm making interest and dividends on. 26 is the max loan I can take, but I have net cash value of 27. So I don't want you to get hung up on that, but that's how that works. 
And I'm being so transparent, I'm actually showing you my exact stuff. Lastly, what did I want to pay off? Remember over here when we were talking about it, what was that debt that I wanted to pay off for my business? I'm just going to move it right here. Wasn't it this line of credit? Yep, that's this one right here. Account ending 223. There it is. How much is my balance? 16,559. 16,559. How much did I take a loan for? I took a loan for about 16,600. I rounded up. And that loan, or it's, yeah, it's I, I'm 16,559. There's the check. This is the mass mutual check I'm holding in my hand. I got it in the mail the other day. Normally I wouldn't order a check, but I wanted to do this training. So I had them send me a check. When I take a loan, I log into my account. Okay. I log in, I go into my policy details. There's a tab that I hit for loans. It asks me, how much do you want? Max loan or specific amount? I didn't want the max loan, which would have been 26. I don't need it all right now. So I took out 16,559. Why 16,559? Well, you see the similarity there? That's how much was owed to Key Bank. So I took 16,559. They mailed me a check. I got it in three days. So here's the check. Then what did I do? I deposit this check in my segregated bank account. Okay, so let's let's go here. What did I do with this check? I just want to walk you through the process here, folks. <clears throat> I took my, now let's just change all this, right? Let's change all these numbers. Now I want you to see my actual thing. So over here, let me get rid of these. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of these. I want you to actually see the methodology of what I'm doing here. Okay, so how much money did I deposit? 30,000. I put $30,000 into my account. I showed you that. How much do I have? I have out of that 36, I have 26,000 available. How much did I take? 16,559. I moved that money into my segregated bank account. I deposited this check, I'm doing it today, into my segregated account. So now this segregated account has 16,559. Now, what am I after? I'm after key bank line of credit for 16,559. I wanna pay this off. And how much am I giving them every month? 289. So if any of you remember the amount that I put it in order here, the amount that I was giving, damn it, there we go to them was 289 a month, which is 12.49% interest. So I wanna make 12.49% interest on my money. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do here, folks. I'm making 6.2% on 30,000. I took that 16,559 out, which the insurance company is gonna charge me 5%, but I already made 6.2 on the full amount, but I'm gonna give them 5% of about half of it back. I take that and over here, what do I do? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay off key bank. Okay. So I'm pay in full key bank. Now where's my check to pay in full key bank? It's right here. Like you guys can see it. This is literally the envelope going to key bank. Here's my loan stuff. Okay. Here's the check that I wrote from my segregated bank account. Here's my segregated bank account check. Here's my loan right there. Literally, I, I mean, I'm doing this as I'm freaking teaching. It's just insane that I can do this. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to take the $289 every month that I used to give away to key bank. This money used to leave my family forever. And now I'm going to pay myself back 300. So this might be confusing because why, why, if I was only giving away 289, why am I paying myself back 300? Because man, am I an honest banker? I round it up. I round it up and I'm setting up a loan repayment right here. Okay. A loan repayment form right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to repay this loan with $300 a month, because that's basically about the amount I was given key bank. And I used to make extra payments to key bank, which is why I rounded up 300 every month is going to repay this, which means now the insurance company is charging me 5% on $300 less every single month. And then that 300 as it gets over here, guess what? Every time I make a monthly payment back to my bank, I have access to that $300. When you make this $289 payment to key bank, do I have access to that money? No, most of it's interest. But when I pay it back to myself, I have access to all of that. The interest is already calculated. I already got the interest. The interest is already taken care of over here because the insurance company already gave me the interest. I'm just giving them back 5% of the 6.2 they gave me. But when you give it away to the bank, do you get any of that back? No, folks, you get none of that back. This is my line of state, my, my line of credit. Does everybody see on the top what that says? Paid in full. It's gone. So this is how I do it, folks. This is exactly how I do it with all of my debts. And what do my debts look like? 
right there. So now, after today, guess what? We can cross this one off, that's gone. And then we're gonna take this $300 a month and I'm gonna then start applying that to this one. So the next one on the chopping board is that. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna start paying this down. Now, can I pay all 63,000 down at one time? Nope. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna take the remaining amount. So the 26 minus the 16, so let's say that's 10 grand plus the 300 every single month, okay? Which is shown right here in my map. Okay, here's the, um, well, it's more than 300 because I've been doing this, but I'm gonna take that recaptured amount every month into my segregated account. I'm gonna use that to pay down, let's switch colors here, it makes it sloppy. I'm gonna take this 289 and I'm gonna use that to pay this down. Plus I'm gonna take 10,000 out and I'm gonna pay this down by 10,000. And now what that's gonna do is that's gonna reduce the amount of interest I have to pay to the bank. So if I'm giving the bank $451, if I give that 10 grand, this might drop to, I don't know, what do you think that'll go to 400? So that frees up $51 a month. Then I'm gonna take that $51 and I'm gonna do the same thing. You see, all I'm doing is I'm just following the system, folks. I'm following the process that the bank created because this is what the bank does every day with you, except for the bank takes your money, now you're the bank, so you're paying yourself back with interest. You ever feel like you don't have control of your real estate business or your money? That's right, the big banks and the institutions, they're in control, right? I know you've felt that before. Private Money Club puts you back in the driver's seat. As members often tell us, it's a total game changer. Join the community of like-minded lenders and borrowers by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Now imagine a point where all your expenses on a monthly basis, remember they were $1,900 a month. Let's just put them all on a credit card, but let's pick a credit card that has points and airline points, right? Let's get some of those airline points because why not? So that we can fly for free. Okay, so you got yourself a credit card. So what you're going to do is every month, remember up here, this system's all done. You have no debts now. And now we're like three to five years in. You're still doing the same thing. So you're still putting money into this specially designed whole life policy. You're still doing that. And then what we're doing now is every dollar we put in, we're getting more. So if every 10 grand, we're making 300, hypothetically, that would be the 300 extra dollars that we made in interest. So if we, every penny we put into this system now makes more than what we put in, why wouldn't we pay all of our household expenses? So let's put all your household expenses on a monthly basis, all of them go onto a credit card. You got all those points for doing that. And then what we're gonna do is every month, we're gonna take a loan from your policy. And remember, we're still using that segregated bank account. This is the segregated bank account here. So. I didn't want you to think I missed that. So the money goes from the IBC into the segregated bank account. And then what we're gonna do is, forget about this line, it's gonna basically pay that credit card off. So every single month, when you get your credit card statement from your bills, what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically take 1,900 bucks from your policy as a loan. And we're basically gonna put that 1,900 bucks here on every month, and then we're gonna pay the credit card off. But this is all going to be done with bill pay, right? Who has time to write checks anymore? This is all going to be bill pay. The only thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set it up over here for this banking policy to every month send a loan for $1,900 a month. And if you have a month that it goes over, no big deal. Log in, change this. Bump it up to $2,000. Bump it up to $2,200. doesn't matter. You're in full control. So everything that we're doing here, you are taking back control of your money because no one else is getting your money now. You are. You're getting every penny. You decided to start paying yourself first. You took back control of all these dollars, $1,200 a month. You took back control of that by just doing nothing complicated, just by taking money from here and paying it down here. And then whatever you didn't pay the credit cards or the car loan, you put it back into your account. You, you, you were an honest banker. You paid yourself back and you paid yourself back the interest you used to give to Visa. So, I missed that up here, but let's say you were getting charged 12% by Visa because you guys might have missed this. Everybody's so focused on the 4% and the, the dividend. How much were you paying Visa? 12%. How much were you paying Lowe's? 18%. When you paid those off and you pay yourself back exactly the amount you were given Visa and Lowe's, aren't you effectively making the same return? Because you're just taking back the money you were giving them. If you were giving them 12%, aren't you now making 12%? Yes. 
If you were paying lows 18%, you paid lows off, but you took the 100 you used to give the lows and you paid yourself. Aren't you making 18%? You are, folks. Isn't that easier than trying to make money in the stock market right now? Stock market's crazy right now. This is way easier. All you're doing is taking back the money you were given to everybody else. And then once your plan's efficient, three to five years, we start focusing on paying all of our household expenses. And what do we get for that? Free flights, airline points, free Starbucks cards, gas cards, all that stuff. You know how credit cards work. You know the points, how they work. It's all you're doing. I know this is a lot of chicken scratch, but I just want you to understand, like, this is possible. This is done. I do this every single day. And you think, oh my God, that's a lot of things. This takes a lot of time. No, it doesn't. It's all automated. There's nothing on here that's not automated outside of you making the decision to put money into your bank instead of their bank. That's the only thing you had to decide. Pay yourself first instead of paying everybody else first. And then after that, be diligent and be an honest banker. If you pay off Visa and you were given Visa 200 bucks, put the 200 bucks back in your account and then make sure it makes it back into your policy. This policy will be one of the most efficient machines you've ever built in time. Just like I showed down here. Can you imagine if this is what it is in like year three or five? What is it going to do in year 10? Is it going to be 10 for, you know, 10, three? No, it's going to be 10 for like 14, 10 for 16, 10 for, for $9,000 or 19,000. Sorry. You get the drift. It only goes up. The beautiful thing about this entire system is the one thing I can tell you is there will never be a time your money will go down. There will never be a time when the whole stock market crashes that your money goes down instead of up. This system only works one way because of uninterrupted compound interest. It's, it's almost fail proof. The only thing that can screw it up is you not being an honest banker. Because if you paid off Visa and you just went and blew $200 a month, you're not effectively recapturing that money. And then you're not recycling that money back into your policy. Therefore, you're missing a very, very valid step. But the one good thing is, is if, even if you didn't do that, your money is still earning uninterrupted compound interest. Every penny you put in, doesn't matter. That will never change. So even if you screw this thing up, you are still ahead of the game because you are still winning. So I did this because I just wanted you guys to understand. I know that was a lot of numbers. And if this is the first time you've ever seen this, that was probably complicated or maybe even confusing. But I can assure you, there's nothing complicated about what I just did. You changed one thing. And then all you did is you automated everything else. But wouldn't it be nice to know if, you know, all that stuff seems complicated? What if somebody else did all that for you? The only thing you had to decide is this is how much money I'm going to put into that specially designed whole life, that infinite banking, banking system that you're talking about. What if that's all you had to decide? And then everything else we handled. We have a mapping team that this is all they do is they build your map. Today, one of the things that happened that provoked this Facebook Live and this Insta Live is I spoke to a client and I'm going through her numbers of her debts because she, she itemized all of her debts and she'd already started the process. She already made the conscious decision to start paying herself first, like I just showed you, but she was still a little unclear on how this whole recycle recapture thing works. She, she thought she understood it, but she's like, can you just demonstrate it? So she gave me all of her debts and I literally took everything she was putting into this banking policy. And I just showed her, said, in six months, we're going to have this debt, this debt, and this debt paid. In 12 months, we're going to have the car loan paid, and we're going to start working on this. In 24 months, we're going to do this, this, and this. I was literally able to show her how to do that. And the thing she was missing is she said, yeah, but I was so focused on the thousand a month that I was putting into the plan that I was missing the fact that I was paying these debts off out of that savings, out of that banking policy, I was paying these debts off and then I was getting 200 here and 500 here and 300 here for paying those debts off. But she wasn't changing her cash flow. That's the biggest thing. Everybody thinks that like all these numbers, you have to work harder for this. Was there anything work? Were you working any harder there outside of clicking a couple buttons? No. All you did is you took back the money that you are so graciously giving to everybody else every single month. If anything about this video kind of sparked your interest, if it even provoked like even just a little bit of interest, you owe it to yourself just to watch the full training video that shows you how this works. That full training video, I'll show you how to get all the money back for every single car you ever buy, drive, and own. I'll show you how we helped a chiropractor erase $478,000 in debt without working any harder, without working any longer 
without losing control of his money and without taking on any additional risk by doing exactly what I just showed you. And he did it in six and a half years, paid off all that debt, a condo, a house, a BMW, a boat, a bunch of credit cards, six and a half years. And he did it using this system. That video will show you exactly how this works. And it will show you the basis of how to be the bank by mimicking what the banks do. And what do the banks do? They move your money. But what are we taught to do with money? Park our money. Give up our good dollars today so that somebody else can make money. What do the banks do with your money? They pay you hardly any interest and they loan your money out and they make 400 to 1300% of your money. It's what they do. My video shows you all this. So please watch the video. And if you guys didn't catch it earlier, how you get that video is that email right there on the screen. Chris at themoneymultiplier.com. Send me an email and I'll send you the training video and you can watch it. And then you can set up a time to talk to me or my team and we will answer all of your questions. And that's it. We're never going to try to sell you something. We don't do that. We'll answer your questions. If this makes sense for you, you will decide if you want to change that one thing in your life. And if you don't, that's okay too. Because obviously if you don't make that decision, well, things are obviously working quite well for you. But there is a lot of people buried in debt. A lot of people that don't know what to do with their money and a lot of people that are scared right now because of what's going on in the economy and what's going on in the stock market. And they are looking for a safe place, a safe place to park money where they have access to it, control of it. And why not get some tax advantages like how about tax free interest and tax free dividends if done properly? Yeah, this will do all of that. It is no secret why this is what the wealthy do with money. And if you guys want a copy of my book for free, just pay the shipping. You go to moneyschoolrei.com slash new book. So folks, I really appreciate you guys all joining me. I haven't really been watching, you know, the, the different comments, but I will try to check them out. But again, if you have questions and you posted them here, just go to my email, send me an email. I'm happy to answer your questions, send you the video. I'll even send you the link for the book, anything you want. Every single Wednesday, it's it's Wealth Wednesday. So it's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you. And we'll see everybody soon. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them. But I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.